Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested, and yes, I'm back with one more video. Every year, kind of my personal tradition, I like to share some of the coffee table books and art books that I've collected and some of my favorite artists and authors uh, from the year, and I want to share those with you as one of my bonus favorite things. Let's start off with just a category of art books. If you've watched our videos of me going to conventions like Comic-Con and New York Comic-Con, you know I head straight beeline to the artist alley where artists, poster artists specifically, work on uh, paintings and posters and their takes on pop art essentially. And uh, sometimes the posters are kind of difficult to get, whether it's through Mondo or Gallery 1988 or Bottle Art Gallery, they can be limited edition posters, but more often than enough, if it's a poster artist or a commercial artist with a big body of work, they may have art books you can pick up. And so my recommendation isn't necessarily for one specific art book, which I do have one here, but for art books from independent artists in general. This one is from one of my favorite artists. I met him at New York Comic Con this year, Jason Edmiston. He's done a bunch of poster work for companies like Mondo. His takes on horror movie posters are just mwah. I actually have this poster here from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And this is just a way for me to see the, his entire body of work, things that I didn't even know he had done because they weren't in pop posters. Um, and just beautiful, beautiful paintings from classic horror characters to things like Iron Giant. And you get to see his entire process from first pen and paper sketches all the way to the final painting. Much easier than buying like 400 of his posters. Speaking of artists, uh, this is an artist who doesn't do posters but does concept art. And you may have seen his work. This is Simon Stallenhag. Uh, and this is, I believe, his third book, which he launched via Kickstarter called The Electric State. Now, Simon here does beautiful, beautiful paintings of not necessarily post apocalyptic, they're alternate reality. Uh, futures. They're kind of like in the 80s or 90s, uh, a world where humans and robots live amongst each other, but something went wrong and there was a war. But basically you have these landscapes that may seem familiar, like along the California coast, for example, but they're littered in the background with robots that may be the size of mountains or the debris of robots living alongside uh, rusted cars. And specifically with the electric state, he tried to do something different. He tried to tell a narrative. So this follows the story of a 19-year-old girl and her robot sidekick as they make their way through an alternate reality's wasteland on the California coast toward San Francisco. This is especially exciting because the Russo brothers have optioned it to turn this into a film in the future. It's gonna be directed by the director of the movie, It. So I can't wait to see this come to life on screen. Speaking of movies, a couple years ago, we went to the set of Alien Covenant, directed by Ridley Scott. And when Adam and I went onto David's laboratory, one of the things that struck us was the, the set design, the production design had filled that space with these anatomical drawings, creepy scrolls. And you could pick a scroll off the wall, unfold it, and see these beautiful, surreal drawings. Well, those drawings were drawn by two concept artists that worked on the production team, Matt Hatton and Dane Hallett. And Titan Books has released now a collection of their drawings, their sketches of xenomorphs. This is through the eye of David in the film, of course. He was studying xenomorphs, studying humans. So as you flip through and get to the end of this book, things get a little more disturbing. If you haven't seen the film, it doesn't end well for some of the humans and even the uh, aliens that David interacts with in the film. But I'm so glad they were able to put this out because I didn't know who did that art and it's that type of world building that made those films so awesome and interesting to look at. Now speaking of behind the scenes for productions, one of my favorite TV shows is Black Mirror. Can't wait for the new season to come out next year. And Charlie Brooker has released now uh, this compendium of behind the scenes stories of how each of this, the episodes so far were made. If you haven't seen Black Mirror, it's totally worth watching. It's the anthology series about our interaction with technology. Uh, it's kind of set in the near future. You don't know exactly how far in the future, but you know, it's, it's the dark nightmare that technology brings as we look into the Black Mirror of 
our cell phones. And this book is really an oral history of the episodes from the writers, the actors, the directors, and how they approach telling their stories, those cautionary tales about technology. Uh, definitely worth reading if you love the episode like USS Callister or San Junipero. Uh, worth reading and picking up this book for those stories alone. And then finally, more behind the scenes work. This is maybe my favorite coffee table book of the year from Dave Addy. This was a blog that he ran called Typeset in the Future. And every couple of months, Dave would go into an incredible deep dive into the typography and design of the visual language of text in science fiction film from 2001 to Moon to Star Trek, kind of deciphering the logic and how the type of those alternate worlds relates to not only the era in which those that content and those TV shows and those films were made, but the logic of the world and whether it's schematics, how that fits into design as a whole. And so this is a book he just released called Typeset in the Future. It's, if you're into science fiction and into typography, I couldn't recommend this more enough. So just a few of my favorite coffee table books of the year. We'll have one more favorite things video coming up. It's, you guess it's it's Adam. So come back tomorrow for that. And again, happy new year. We'll see you in 2019.